What's up guys, welcome back to another video of me, Silver 7 and today my friends, we are going to be doing a review on the game Skirt Ritual. I've been promising this review, so here it is. Inside of this video, we will be covering all different aspects of Skirt Ritual, and all of the different things I like and dislike. But since there isn't much I don't like, it's not really going to be much about that. Skirt Ritual is an intense, round-based zombies horror shooter by indie developers Wales Interactive. Play solo or up to four players online, facing relentless waves of quiet quiet ones, while solving mysterious missions, uncovering easter eggs, upgrading steampunk weapons and obtaining miracles, a vast network of Celtic god powers. This game originally entered beta in 2022. People who were subscribed to its Patreon were able to access it to give community feedback, and after the game had almost spent two years in development, it was time for the game to go global, and it had its full release in 2024 on April 18th. When the game finally released, it was four features. For example, this this game launched with four maps so that you had variety and endless hours of progression to achieve. Each map comes along with its own experience and hidden secrets to uncover. After you complete the story on any of these maps, you now have the option to leave the level or to discover a further story with an additional boss fight at the end. This game also launched with a new way to revive your teammates, on top of the traditional revive system. If you were unable to save your teammate, you can bring them back during the round using a revive token. This is similar to the battle bus system in Fortnite. A really good thing about revive tokens is everyone spawns in with one. These tokens are not only for your teammates but can actually be used for yourself. So if your teammates are unable to revive you, you can actually revive yourself by going to a revive station. This will stop you from spawning in the next round without any of your weapons, meaning that you can keep your weapons and enjoy the game. However, if you use one of these tokens, it is going to cost you a pretty penny, as to buy one of these tokens back, the cost will depend on the difficulty that you're playing. However, on Nightmare Difficulty, you won't be able to buy one at at all. But luckily if you are playing on Nightmare, you do start with one revive token, so use it wisely. Touching on the traditional way to revive, where you go to your teammate, interact with the marker and then try to revive them, the issue I have with it currently is that the revive does one of two things I don't like. Number one, if you get hit by a zombie, you completely lose your progress on the revive. I don't understand if this is a feature or a bug, but personally, I don't like it because it removes risk and reward. The reward being your friend got up, the risk being the game could end. Secondly, I don't like how the bleed out counter works. Currently with the game, when you're reviving your friend, if the bleed out counter reaches zero, they will die. It doesn't matter if you're interacting with them to revive them, if it reaches zero, they will die. So it does mean though, that it takes about five seconds to revive revive your teammate, say you're holding it within 4 seconds and there's only that 1 second that you need to revive them, it doesn't matter if you're interacting with it, they will still die. So personally, I feel like if you're interacting with your friend and you're trying to revive them, then this counter should be frozen just whilst you're reviving and then continue if you let go. Just like how other games usually handle this counter, as I feel like it's a really unfair way that your friend can just bleed out and that be it. Apart from that nitpick, I do think this revive token system is a good addition to round based zombies. This game launched with 5 perks. These perks are Fast Hands, Elixir of Life, Shock and Load, Stallion's Juice, Swift Death. And all these perks have additional upgrades. At the end of each match, you will unlock samples. These samples can be used to upgrade your perks and come in three different tiers. The top tier sample can be achieved approximately after round 30. These upgrades are handled in the menu. Elixir of Life will allow you to increase the amount of health you have in the game. You can upgrade fast hands to make your reload speed faster. Swift death increases your weapon's fire rate, shock and load upon reload will release a damage like aura based on your weapon's damage, stallion's juice will improve your ability to move, making you feel that bit faster. This game also launched with different difficulty settings which we kind of touched on previously. These come in the form of beginner, easy, normal, hard and nightmare. Each of these difficulties will make the game either more difficult or easier. The thing I like about this is how accessible this makes the game for newer entry players while keeping the game still a challenge for those who are veteran players. Something I want to touch on briefly here is that this game does have DLC that can be bought. However, it's literally just cosmetic. You don't have to buy it by any means. You can still enjoy the base game for everything it has, and that includes the story and all the things we spoke about so far, without having to spend another penny on the game. But if you're someone who likes to collect masks or in-game voice lines or whatever it may be, then this game has you covered, as they have optional viable DLC. Not only are these nice things to collect, but you're also supporting the creators. And if you're not 
not in to buy the DLCs, then this game still has you covered, as with each map that's ever came out on this game, you also get a Skur Pass with it. As it stands currently, you don't buy a single one of these passes, you just activate them at will. Simply choose a pass you want to progress through, head into a match, gain XP, and unlock loads of cosmetics. The Skur Passes come with so much content, and they are there in the base game. This game is only £20, or $20 US dollars, and you're already getting a really good offering on launch. The Skur Pass adds loads of progression and gives you something to aim for. If you're a completionist and you want to collect everything, then you're going to have hours to spend on this. Each Skur Pass is also themed to the map that you're playing. So when you're doing the Sewers Skur Pass, you can actually get a Rat Mask. Another feature in this game is the ability to level up. These come in the form of Dread Levels. This adds even more player progression with endless hours of replayability as you will strive to get to the highest level possible. Let's talk about the Miracle Tokens. All of the Miracle Tokens are based off of mythological gods. You will first get a Miracle Token after round 1 and then it's every other round after that. They add so many endless possibilities to your playstyle and it all depends on how you play. Some allow you to get critical hits, others will allow you to have increased movement speed, you can get an ability that will make your stims faster, you can change your molotovs and make them stronger, have an elemental knife, freeze enemies, electrocute enemies, and you can even get a fire tornado. Although this system is unique and helpful, at the same time I do find that there is a downfall with it. When you have a miracle token, you can choose between three different miracles, but the issue I find is that sometimes you don't get the miracles that you might want, making it luck. However, you can refresh them, this comes at a cost, your points. I've noticed that it actually gets more expensive the more that you refresh it. And with there being so many different miracles in the game, you're not actually guaranteed that you're going to get anything good, which means that you could go the whole game without getting what you want. This is a huge problem with the weapons where they don't feel balanced in the normal mode. And this comes down to the fact that when you're playing normal, if you don't get the correct miracles for critical hits, then in the later rounds, around about round 20, you will start to see your weapons falling off. You can see this almost immediately with Abraham's and Isaac's and all of the other mini bosses. And this problem is present across all weapons including special weapons. The problem is is that there isn't a perk in here to boost damage. The perk is only available as a miracle. Although we have swift death which increases the rate of fire it sadly doesn't do what double tap does on Call of Duty and it doesn't increase the weapon's damage. With this game having perk upgrades I would have liked to have seen swift death have a perk upgrade that allowed for you to do more damage to bosses and more damage to regular zombies. Apart from this little nitpick I really do enjoy the miracle system and I think it's quite fun because it's something different. Maybe Maybe the only other thing I would say is that the price of the refresh could come down a little. The good thing about it is although it is difficult, there is a pro and a con to that. The pro of it being a little difficult to get what you need does mean that there's something to go for on the higher rounds, giving you replayability. Something I would like to touch on is the game's tone. While a lot of players tried to compare this to Call of Duty, I think it's easy to forget that this is actually its own game. While Scar Ritual obviously takes inspiration from games like Bioshock, Outlast and Call of Duty Zombies, we must remember that Scare Ritual is its own experience. And this game doesn't lack to tell you that. It has its own unique feel and it even has its own unique features. We can start with something as simple as the menu. Upon loading the game for the first time you will be greeted with an awesome cutscene, giving you an insight into the world of Scare Ritual. Inside of the cutscene you will see Arwen who is tasked to try and stop her mum from releasing the siren song and trying to take over the world. In order to accomplish her mission she clones her father, us, the player, to help her defeat Elizabeth and put an end to the siren song once and for all. Throughout the game's many quests you will get a cutscene upon completion of a level. Each of these cutscenes, while quite short, still add a lot to the story. Some critics may say they don't like the endingness of them and the fact that some of them are quite short and I do agree to a degree as a lot of them are mostly of Thomas running with explosions in the background. However, I still believe that these cutscenes add a bit of depth to the story and they are enough. One thing I would like to see is a difference in cutscenes depending on if you did the guide quest or if you did the hardcore quest as I think this would give people an incentive to keep going back and doing the hardcore easter eggs. Touching on it briefly here I think it's really awesome as well that after completion of the hardcore easter egg on each of the maps you gain access to a seal which once you've collected four of these you can now get the god killer. A brand new super weapon that hits so hard. Get to high rounds easily with the god killer and you can kill endless waves of the undead. The god killer is the equivalent of a super easter egg that we've wanted for years. Now we're going to be touching on boss fights. Now I'm not very sure how I feel about them, like I really do like the boss fights, they're not hard, they're just right, they're kind of balanced. However, one of my issues with the boss fights is where's the music? Other than the last map I believe, the 
there's no music in the boss fights and I really miss having boss fight music. It might even be the Ashes of Skirt Hotel that has boss fight music. So I'm going to show you two clips. I'm going to show you the first clip is just going to be me fighting the boss. Okay, and now I'm going to put super awesome boss fight music over this boss fight and see what you guys think. So what do you think is best? Let me know down in the comments down below, but I think we need boss fight music, especially going forward with any of the new maps that come out. House of the Damned, please, boss fight music. This game has a range of different special weapons. We have the Thunderbolt, the Howler, the Plague, and the Sword. And if you want to count the God Killer, then sure, we have that too. But it's good to say that these aren't all good. The Plague definitely needs a buff. The fire rate is just really slow. I respect that they're really easy to get. You don't have to do any crazy quests to obtain them however even when i get my weapon to tier one or two or three they just still don't slap and it doesn't matter what round i'm on one of the most obvious though isn't just the plague the sword on deadly lovers fortress after a while i got it to tier five and i still couldn't kill a single zombie it took me about three or four hits just to start getting kills after round 25 and it doesn't really feel like they scale very well in nightmare mode and even though when i've played in normal mode they still don't feel like they scale very well and this calls even further for a double output damage perk to come to the game in the future or if they don't do this they definitely need to consider buffing some of these weapons because although they are easy to obtain it's crazy to think that after spending a lot of points the fact that they still struggle to get kills made them a little bit redundant i don't want them to be like the god killer i definitely want them to have a point where they fall off but round 25 just seems a bit too early apart from that going on to like the designs of these weapons i love that i think it's absolutely absolutely awesome. The designs are really cool and a lot of them fit the map that they're in. Although I said it was weak, one of my favourite things about the plague is the engraving and the eyes that light up. The Ashes of Skur Hotel has one of the most powerful weapons and that's the Howler, so don't even get me started on how much I like this weapon. It's really overpowered, as soon as you shoot it, an energy ball will come out which will bounce all around the room, literally taking out all of the enemies and it's exactly what you want from a game like this. So after going over a lot of different things in this video, it's very obvious to see that Skur Ritual has a lot of potential. There are so many new systems, so many awesome pieces of content. However, now we're going to jump into a few things I would like to see come in the future. I would like to see more side easter eggs that are not connected to the main quest as I think this would add loads of replayability. I think things like free perk quests would be a really awesome thing to see. More dull quests for new achievements and also for more miracle tokens and side easter eggs for music would be absolutely awesome to see. It would be awesome to see new buildables come to the game. Whether that come in the form of building a wonder weapon or taking inspiration from Call of Duty and having a shield, trample steam or something like that. While some of these are unlikely to be added, it would be cool to still see some sort of buildable system in the future. I haven't touched on it much in this video, but I would really like it if Wales Interactive introduced more Welsh folklore into Skur Ritual. I absolutely enjoyed doing my video recently on House of the Damned looking at Skur Hotel as Skur House. So more folklore, whether if that be in Intel or if that be in the game via some sort of in-game radio system, that would be awesome too. As for the new music easter eggs that are being added, something that I really don't like about Call of Duty is once you've played that song, you can't play it again. So please, Wales Interactive, make it so that once the song's been played, if you do the easter egg again for it, it will play again. Inside of the roadmap, it's been announced that we will be getting new perks. If they add a perk limit, I would like it so that we can hot swap our perks. And what I mean by this is just like how in Infinite Warfare Zombies, we were able to go up to a perk machine 
team that we already acquired a perk from and we would be able to get rid of that perk. So if it was possible, I would like to basically be able to go and get the cure for the perk that I have integrated into my body by going up to the perk machine and being able to remove it. But hopefully they won't add a perk limit and if they don't, then we're going to be rolling in the perks. Going forward on all of the maps after completion of the Easter egg, I would like some even better cutscenes where it's not just Thomas running away from an explosion. I would also like to see some buffs to those special weapons we spoke about briefly in this video alongside some of the standard weapons. On the topic of weapons, one of the things that I've ran recently on my channel was a poll. I gave people four different options and the popular option on there was camo grinding. I do agree that this game, after you've got all of the achievements and you've completed all the easter eggs and got the mask and the skirt passes, other than dread levels there's not really a lot to aim for. So one of the top requested features, and myself included, was a weapon mastery or a weapon camo grind. Even if they started small and made it so that each weapon only had six different camos and it required you to get kills, headshots, certain enemy types so many times, I've just seen that some players really want something extra to aim for. Another really awesome feature would be the addition of a weapons locker. This would allow you to modify the weapons and to add new attachments such as an extra mag. This feature is not something I wouldn't mind seeing because I'd love to see it, but this one is more of a requested feature from somebody on my YouTube channel. I liked that in Sewers of the Dead that you had to use the Plague Wand weapon in order to gain access to new areas of the map, and I'd love to see more of this in the future. I mentioned this previously inside of this video, but I really would like to see the hardcore Easter egg get its own cutscenes so that they're slightly different from doing the guided egg as I think this would make youtubers race against each other in live streams to try and be the world's first to that cutscene as it stands even on nightmare mode I feel like it's a bit sluggish to get to high rounds if we could get some sort of rampage inducer or something or just to make the zombies be able to run that bit faster I think this would make the game just that bit more enjoyable I don't think this should affect the mini bosses though and where the mini bosses are concerned I think that the first one that spawns at the beginning of like round four for example which on sewers of the dead you get a stranger on round four or five. I think that the first mini boss that spawns shouldn't have just that much health. It should just be a warning to the player that these guys do exist. They should sort of go up over time. So the first one that spawns should have half the health that it currently has because it's just a tank and it gets in the way and it stops you from being able to explore. And I know that that sounds a bit contradictory to the fact that I want it to be intense, but I think on the very early rounds, it would be nice to be able to kill the stranger by round five rather than having him still running around by round six or seven. As it stands in the game, it's really hard to find Lucky when he switches locations. Maybe they could animate the dog walking from one kennel to another. There's two ways they can handle this, by either giving him a beam, a bit like the mystery box, or if they add a new perk, something like Vulture Raid. Another awesome suggestion from one of the people who are watching these videos. It was announced that in the coming months, we will get two new weapons coming to the game. And I think that's something we're gonna need. We need more weapons because currently there is only about 15. I did mention it in this video but I think perk upgrades definitely need to be better. I don't like the fact that we can still earn samples once we've got that samples tier completely done as I feel like now if they add a perk we can max it out on day one. For example I feel like swift death could have that bonus of being able to do additional damage to mini bosses because as it stands a lot of different weapons currently are just not viable options and stand next to no chance to defeat one of these mini bosses. Another really interesting thing to see is that the hardcore easter egg doesn't start after the guided easter egg but instead it starts at the beginning of the map and the whole map has a hardcore easter egg from the start of round one up to round 20. In Scare Ritual I really like all of the different power-ups we have. One of my favorite being triple points because currently it's only double points in most games and triple points is definitely really nice and rewarding. However I would like to see more power-ups such as Lucky the Dog Everywhere, maybe a nuke, invincible, a faster melee power-up or maybe an ultimate recharge power up and a random perk power up that's a lot of damage another top requested feature is to be able to have in-game chat so that you can actually use a keyboard to type to your friends or the people that you're in a squad with also the ability to be able to use your microphone to actually communicate with those you're playing with and this isn't really much of a feature but i'm gonna do this for the playstation players now i know a lot of you are angry and a lot of you have even said how you feel towards me for saying that this game's good so i haven't been going through the same thing as you've been going through but i'm gonna put it here right now one of the best features that you can do Wales Interactive is get this game working perfectly over on PlayStation 5 so these guys can enjoy the game just as much as we have. So some more features I would like to see come to the game and some of these are very obvious so I'm just going to list them. More maps, more perks, 
weapon FOV slider because who doesn't want your weapon not in your mouth? And here are some good perk ideas based off of other games. So a perk that gives more cash, racing stripes from infinite warfare, double damage, elemental pop if possible, mule kick so we can have an additional weapon, or maybe a melee perk just to get that class actually working, or some sort of wonder fizz mechanic that allows you to get these perks at a reduced price. And my final suggestion is tombstone because at the moment, well, when you die and you die die, you don't come back with much and it's really hard to recover. So I think tombstone would be a nice addition to the game. Now my next request is the fact that Noah J got a voice line, right? Ew. Come here and let me smell you. Come here and let me smell you. Oh, right, another speedrunner. So, where's Fudge's voice line? I'm just kidding, but hey, it would be really cool if my voice got added. I've absolutely enjoyed playing Scare Ritual and I can't wait to produce more videos for it in the future. This is actually my first time making some sort of review, so I'm going to go ahead and give this game an 8 out of 10. And how could it be even better? Well, with all of these features being considered, I think that this could easily be a 10. And I think that that's a fudge 10. And a fudge 10 is, um, is quite high. So if you can get to a fudge 10, that's just above any other rating. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, then make sure sure to smash that like button and subscribe and also check out my videos because I have loads of guides and tutorials and I also have loads of the latest and greatest news coming to the community. Anyways guys, I was George7, you've been absolutely awesome and I shall see you guys in my next video.